All right. So hopefully, Chen, in today's stream, we are going to get maybe Glowstone. If we don't get Glowstone, well, we get, we'll get hopefully fairly close to Glowstone because I think we are finally at the point where we should be able to make ourselves a fusion core, 64 fusion electromagnets, and hopefully our first fusion reactor because setting this up actually isn't too bad so long as you have all of the redstone flux required to actually get this thing going and that is quite a bit of redstone flux you can see on the left here that we need 200 redstone flux per take per electromagnet and the smallest fusion reactor that you can build does require 96 electromagnets which is why the quest wants us to make 96 electromagnets or why it wants us to make uh, 64 electromagnets and will give us 32 as a reward but uh, if we quickly whip up the calculator and do um 96 multiplied by 200, that is 19,200 redstone flux per tick, which should be fine, given that we are currently producing 36,000 redstone flux per tick over in our fission reactor. Um, it does mean, though, however, that we are going to have to use our cryostabilized flux ducts to get power from the old reactor into uh, the electromagnets of the new reactor. So, the, um, the first thing that we're going to have to make, chat, of course, is 64 electromagnets. I think those are going to be the easier part of today's craft because I think the hardest part by far is going to be the uh, fusion core itself because this one has a bit of a janky recipe. Um, it does require four elite plating, which is made with uh, four boron, easy enough, four crystal binder, which is made with crushed of whatever this element is, as well as uh, calcium sulfate, magnesium dust, and then crushed obsidian. And then uh, this stuff here is made by crushing granite, I guess, but there's only like a not point you get less than one per crush but that shouldn't be too bad actually now that i look at the recipe there that doesn't seem terrible um calcium sulfate is made with calcium sulfate solution which you get by combining fluoride water or fluorite water and sulfuric acid sulfuric acid is uh, sulfur trioxide and water sulfur trioxide is uh, like oxygen and sulfur dioxide Sulfur dioxide is molten sulfur and oxygen gas. Molten sulfur is made by just putting the sulfur into a melter. So that is quite the uh, the process of chemical reactors there to get that calcium sulfate. Thankfully, we don't need too much of it. Uh, it looks like we need just two calcium sulfate to get the four uh, crystal binder that we're going to need. Uh, but that's per plating, and we do need four plating, my goodness. But uh, on top of that, we also need DU plating, which is sulfur, uranium, and advanced plating. And then from there, the advanced plating and the regular plating should not be too difficult. So I think I'll start with the electromagnets. These seem a little easier. These require advanced plating, which is tough alloy, redstone, and basic plating, as well as copper solenoids, which are just iron and copper. And if you've been watching any of the previous streams, you'll know at this point in time uh, that I'm all about using our refined storage system to auto-craft uh, really as much as we possibly can here. And uh, I don't think it's going to be too difficult for us to teach our system how to make these um, electromagnets. And at that point, we should just be able to request the 64 that we need. We could make a bigger reactor if we wanted to, but I don't really think it's uh, strictly necessary. The hardest part here is going to be the tough alloy, but I don't think that's going to be too bad, chat. I think we can teach our alloy furnace how to make tough alloy. Tough alloy, of course, being made with uh, boron, uh, ferroboron and lithium. So I think, first of all, we have to get some steel. Also, let me check my sound real quick. Yeah, the sound is fine. Uh, let me get some steel. And also, I want to turn on auto search. That's the one auto selected. There we go. Oh, that's set to crafting only. Normal. Okay, so if we grab some steel and we grab some boron, we can teach our system that uh, one steel and one boron equals, I think, two ferro boron. Let me check that though. So boron, steel in the old alloy furnace, like so, gets you two ferro boron. Nice. So we'll go ahead and give that the quick encode just as soon as i've cancelled that there we go and then from there we want to teach it that uh, one ferroboron and one lithium i think again makes two uh tough alloy now right now our lithium is not connected to the system um, i think that is definitely something that we do want to uh, rectify because i do think that we're also going to use some lithium later on today as the uh, the fuel source for our reactor uh, so i think our lithium is in here now I don't think we have to smelt it, right? I'm fairly certain that we can use our lithium in ingot form, and that's gonna, uh, or in dust form, sorry, and that's gonna be uh, just fine. Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, whack down one of those, and as soon as we have that attached, we should be able to come back over here and uh, finish off this craft, so. Lithium dust, let me just check that before I uh, encode it. So if I do one ferro one and one lithium dust, it does indeed work, fantastic. That makes two tough alloys, so. Boom, boom, 
any code. All right, so these guys down here want to be put in a new crafter with an alloy furnace. Right now, we don't have one. So I will go ahead and make a new one. I don't want to take the one that we already have because I know we're going to need that uh, just for kind of casual crafting in the future. Um, but one thing I did do, by the way, chat between streams is I, not that, I uh, temporarily, or I guess permanently even, added a new cache here. So this is kind of intercepting some of the graphite that's being made. Uh, so right now we're making graphite, of course, from our charcoal from the tree farm. And the graphite is going either this way to make coal cook. And you can see this is backed up. So this is still getting more than enough uh, graphite. It's going this way, which is sending it over to the steel, which I think also as of right now is doing uh, just fine. Yeah, you can see this is... Uh, it's doing all right. It's still getting enough uh, enough graphite blocks to make more steel. And then on top of that, we also have it being stored here as well, because if we're going to make a lot of these uh, tough, uh, a lot of these um, basic plating, we need quite a bit of graphite just available to us. And so that's why we have that there. Eventually, we will put down like a new tunnel in here and get like a storage bus on there. But uh, for now, we can just go ahead and, and grab some of that and throw it into our system. And then back over here, chat, let's head in, throw down our alloy furnace. I think for now, we can put it like right here. And I think we do also have a crafter lying around. We do indeed. Fantastic. I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll have this guy point down, of course. Like so. We can then throw an import bus, which I don't think our system yet knows how to craft, but uh, we should be able to throw it together, hopefully, fairly easily. Uh, we're going to throw this, of course, on the uh, the left-hand side. The, uh, the thunder is a little intimidating, Chad. I'm not going to lie. Not what I want to hear. But uh, hopefully that won't take too long to craft. Beautiful. And then we'll throw that down. For now, at least, right about... If I can get right about there, I guess I can just rotate it once I place it down, right? Beautiful. Okay. So at this point, chat, we should be able to just go ahead and throw in our two patterns. One for uh, the Ferroborn and one for the Tough Alloy. I'm hoping that it doesn't uh, mess this up. And by that, I mean I'm hoping if we request Tough Alloy, it doesn't, for example, send uh, Ferroborn and Boron. Right? Like, I don't know if it's smart enough to know that it first has to send steel and boron to make ferroboron, and then it has to send ferroboron and lithium. We'll give it a try, though. We'll see what happens. If I request, let's say, a stack of tough alloy, it seems like that's okay. Right now, it's just sending the ferroboron and lithium because we already have uh, ferroboron in the system. That's okay. Um, I do, of course, want to get speed upgrades in there. And I also think, chat, that uh, despite it being a small diversion here, I might just teach our system real quick how to make speed and energy upgrades because we have all of the components required, right? Um, for example, the speed upgrades especially at this point in time are uh, super easy to make. We just need to teach it this and we also have to teach it how to make the plates. And at that point now, I'm pretty sure we can request basically as many speed upgrades as we like. The energy upgrades are a little bit of a trickier beast, but I think they should be fairly easily uh, fairly easy to do as well because uh, obsidian and quartz can be crushed in the manufacturing so obsidian and quartz essentially all we want to do now is teach it that uh, processing that one obsidian uh, do we have a manufacturer lying around we do indeed fantastic uh, equals one two three four pulverized obsidian encode and then on top of that we want to teach it that uh, one nether quartz equals i think one crushed quartz yeah, like so, encode. And then from there, we should be able to put these in. Uh, oh, no, we actually need to set up. Oh, no, we already have a manufacturer, yeah. So from there, we should be able to put these in right about here. Boom and boom. And at that point, chat, I think we're pretty much good to go. We do have to teach it how to make the actual energy upgrade itself and make sure that we're using the right quartz there. But I think, chat, that we are good to go. So now if we want to request, for example, oh, let's get that uh, in correctly, Isaac. If we wanted to request, for example... 100 speed upgrades. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 64 speed upgrades. Like so. Begin. It's going to do it. And it's going to do it nice and fast as well because we have all of those crafting CPUs in our multi-block. And on top of that, if we wanted to request um, the energy upgrades. So boom, boom, start. We are missing gold pressure plates. That's fine. We can teach our system how to make those as well. Encode. Beautiful. And I think, Chad, that we are good to go. So let's see. Energy. 64. Begin. Give it a second to catch up. There we go. And boom. Now, I don't know if our manufacturing in the um, 
in the, in the crafting cube is fast. It's quite fast. It's not super fast. It could be faster. And, you know, ideally, as we make more of these uh, upgrades, we'll make it faster, right? We can put more uh, energy and speed upgrades into all of our machines. All right. Are you done? You're almost done. You're getting there on the old... Uh, that's a lot of obsidian, eh? The uh, importers feel like they could definitely do with some speed upgrades. It feels like they're not quite fast enough. Still not quite fast enough, eh? Use a stack upgrade. Ah. So four speed upgrades, also just a lot more sugar. Let me make like 10 of these. We have the sugar for it now. I think people also recommended using stack upgrades for the fighter grow as well. One stack upgrade and three speed upgrades is the fastest. Ah, I see. So if we take you, which does require that we turn some of our sugar cane uh, into actual sugar and it uh well while we can auto craft it, it is, it is going to be faster if we do it manually for now so if i throw you in in here there we go all right now we're getting somewhere so i think we should now have some energy upgrades we do indeed we can throw those in like so and really get that up to uh, to maximum speed there uh, whilst using still a reasonable amount of power and then we'll do the same here in the alloy furnace as well to get that uh, really chugging along uh, did we use all of the speed upgrades we did let's request another stack again we've got i think basically Effectively infinite amounts of, of lapis, redstone, and iron. Yeah, right now we've got like over 100,000 or near 100,000 of, of all of those items. So they're not really a problem uh, for us. And you can see we've got those speed upgrades nice and fast. Uh, the energy upgrades, of course, you'll, as you can see, are taking a little bit longer. But for the most part, not terrible. Um, it might not be a terrible idea, though, for us to uh, speed up the crafter here. Because it seems like the speed at which the uh, quartz is being sent to the manufactory is also kind of slowing it down. But let's see, if I want to request like another 34 energy upgrades to fill out this last machine here, how long is that going to take? Yeah, see, now that seems to be going quite a bit faster, especially now that the quartz is being put in quicker than it's being used as well. Nice. Okay, that's going to take a, a little bit of time still, but that's fine. Uh, we could probably also request like extras so we have them ready for the future when we need them. But uh, for now, chat, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Did we get all the tough alloy we requested? We did indeed. Nice. So in theory, chat, we should be able to request 64 electromagnets. So we're missing the basic plating and we're missing steel. So what we should do, again, we could we can fix these problems easily. We could just craft those. But I think in the interest of, you know, keeping this going for the long term, we should teach our system how to make the basic plating real quick, two lead and two graphite in code. And then what we should do is we should go and put, and uh, we should also teach, I guess, actually how to turn uh, blocks of steel into steel. We'll do that in a second, though. Uh, we should go and put external storage on our two caches, the one that has steel and the one that has graphite. So it's kind of got all of the, you know, tools it needs to make it, it itself going forward. So uh, let's go and real quick, chat, make some more tunnels. Those, of course, being hoppers, machine wall, and redstone. So the graphite is in here, which is a little awkward because it's right up against the wall, right? which is unfortunate. It doesn't need power as well. So we could, if we wanted to here, maybe use like a, uh, like replace one of these item ducts with like a, a fluxed one. The steel should be easy enough, right? I think we already have external storages in here. Yeah, we do. So for this, all we have to do is something like that and hook the cable up. And then, of course, when we go back, teach our system how to craft blocks of steel into actual steel. But I think for this connection here... Oh, no, it's still not going to work, is it? I was going to say we could replace this with, like, a fluxed item duct so it can transfer both items and power. But that's not going to work because we still need to be able to get the power out of the other side there. Hmm. Although, actually, I think it might work. Hold on, chat. Hold on. I have an idea. So if we go and type in item duct. We can make these guys over here, the signalum plated item ducts, which require electrum, signalum, and item ducts, like so. And these can transfer items, but also up to 4,000 redstone flux per tick. And so if we place these here, like that, and then we move, for example, this cryostabilized flux duct, and just put it like here for now, because the power does still need to be able to go over there. Uh, ooh, that's still going to be a bit of an issue. Okay, hold on. We'll come back to this power line in a second. For now, though, if I do this, 
inside of here, we can have the bottom be where the tunnel goes for the cabling. And then up here, all we have to do is run a flux duct to there to send power through. And so at that point, chat, I think we're going to have to move this guy because now the rest of these machines are not receiving power. So I'm going to temporarily move you out of the way. This is set to up. So we're going to move this as well. We're going to put this back here. Once again, set that to up. Like so. And then from there, chat, all I'm going to do, if I can... I would rather not break that because it's full of stuff. But if I can grab this and put it back down here, we can then just use an item duct on the inside. And again, we'll use one of the, um, the flux item ducts. Like so. Because at that point, we can then go ahead and just put down a cable right there, and that's still going to power the rest of the, the machines whilst also uh, sending the items through into the manufacturing. We might have to put a servo down. Oh, no, that works. Okay, so that was all we needed was a servo right there. That is bizarre, chat. I would not have thought that, but apparently a servo there works just fine. All right, so that's all working, and our system now has access to a graphite. And so I think, chat, if we head on back through to here, we should be able to request those 64 electromagnets. Um, real quick, we do have to teach our system, of course, how to turn uh, blocks of steel into steel, but that is an extremely easy craft to, uh, to teach. Whack that into our crafting cube, and then from there, 64 electromagnets begin. Oh, look at that chat. It's so quick as well, or at least it was so quick for the first few seconds. I assume we're now, we've now hit like a smelting bottleneck or Something along those lines. Oh, you're the alloy smelter, of course. It needs to make 900 tough alloy. My goodness, I'm very happy that I did not try and make those uh, manually, chat. Uh, for now, I will pick up this 13x13 13 13 compact machine that we made in the last stream. I'm not too worried about that just yet. Uh, we don't really have a use for it at the moment either. But uh, while we wait for those to be made, chat, let's make a machine chassis. Let's make two of these um, magnesium solenoids. Actually, we'll wait and we'll do those at the end once the tough alloy is done in the other, the other craft. So... We need two chemical reactors for the fusion core, but we also need chemical reactors to make like the uh, the crystal binder and stuff here. So our rock crusher we do have. That's an easy place to start. Let's get you, uh, let's get some granite. We've got a few pieces of granite here, although I think we are most certainly uh, gonna have to make some more granite. Uh, thankfully we do have the old igneous extruder right here. And I think granite is on the list. It is indeed, so if we take you out Granite is being made. Good stuff. Does need water as well, but that is easily uh, easily done. Or somewhat easily done. <laughs> it's still not super fast. But yeah, there we go. That is coming in nice and quick. Do we have spare speed and energy upgrades? We do indeed. Let's whack both those in. Beautiful. So I think we need like 16 of this um, crushed rhino dust. Because uh, if we're going to make... Four of these elite plating. Each one needs four crystal binders. So yeah, we need 16 uh, in total. It's got 12. And so getting these should not be too bad. You get approximately one per every granite. I think the, the estimate was uh, 0.8 per granite. So it really shouldn't take us too much longer there to get the 16. Nice. Beautiful. All right. That part was nice and easy, chat. Nice and easy. Let's make four regular plating. Let's upgrade that to advanced plating. Again, we'll wait for the... Oh, the crafter finish? How is that doing, by the way? That is doing okay. Machine doesn't accept item. Tough alloy. This worries me. <laughs> Where does that need to go? Machine doesn't accept item. I wonder if it's just because, like, it's crafting other things. I'm going to hope that it works eventually. Um, Isaac, make sure nothing important has lost its power from you removing the power. Flux took downstairs to the main room. Mm, yes, okay, I do need to fix that. Um, it hasn't. It's just our farming area that's lost its power. Um, but you are right that we do need to uh, to reconnect that up. I guess, actually, chat, all we have to do here is just replace this with this. And we should be good to go. Right at that point, we can set this to extract. We can put under the duct right about here. And our farm should continue to receive its uh, regularly scheduled power. Nice. So, pulverized obsidian is easy enough. Magnesium dust is also easy enough. It's the calcium sulfate. So... We need, let me bookmark some recipes here. Crystallizer, bookmark that. We need a chemical reactor, bookmark that. A fluid enricher. Oh gosh, crushed fluorite. Where do we get crushed fluorite from? We get it from 
diorite. I see. Okay, so let's quickly swap over our igneous extruder to uh, to diorite mode. There we go. Please don't telescale. And then from there, what else do we need? We need the sulfuric acid, right? So that is made with yet another chemical reactor. Sulfur trioxide, which is yet another chemical reactor, <laughs> which is oxygen and sulfur dioxide, which is, you guessed it, yet another chemical reactor. Molten sulfur, which is a melter. Okay, I don't know if we have a melter. I know we do have one, but I don't know if we have a spare one. We do. Okay, so I'll take you for now. Um, I think we're going to have to make like four chemical reactors. Um, temporarily, let me go and turn off the oxygen usage in our other room. We are making oxygen, albeit quite slowly. Uh, oh gosh, let me reset that entry point just in case. Uh, we are making oxygen over here. And thankfully, we do actually have a, a tank full of this stuff, which is nice. So we can uh, tap into that for our, our sulfur trioxide making. So this might not be too bad, chat, actually. There we go. All right, chat. We should have everything that it takes to make one, two, three, four chemical reactors. Beautiful. I think for now, chat, where do I want to do this um, is a good question. I think for now, we could probably just do it here. Because this is a system that I really think we're not going to have to use too much. I'm hoping we can just use it like once or twice and be uh, and be good to go. So let me run some... Uh, actually, let's upgrade to the next tier of flux ducts if we can. I think we do have Signalum lying around. We do indeed. Just in case we hit a, a bottleneck. So if we're going to make... 16 of these, which is what we need. We need 16 crystal binder. Each crystal binder needs half of a calcium sulfate. So we need eight calcium sulfate, which means we need, you know, however many millibuckets of calcium sulfate solution. But for that, we need... We'll start with the fluoride water. So the fluoride water is just water and crushed fluoride in a fluid enricher. I think we might also have a fluid enricher. Oh, that's a fluid infuser. And I assume those are not the same thing. They are not. Okay, let's get a fluid enricher. Real quick. That doesn't look too difficult to make, thankfully. Hopper. Servo. Advanced plating. I think we're like one advanced plating shy. Perfect. So we'll throw you down. Like right about there. And then all we have to do here is move over our water source block, throw in our fluoride, and that is going to produce what we're after. We're also going to do a lot of hot swapping, chat, of all of our speed and energy upgrades, but there we go. So we're making fluoride water. That's part one of this uh, equation taken care of. Next up is the hard part. It's the sulfuric acid. So we combine that with water and sulfur trioxide. So the final product is, so I'm going to put a reactor down here. We're then going to pull in the water, or the, the fluoride water even, from here. Let's make a couple of servers as well. We're going to need them. We'll have glass. Please, system, make me glass. So that's going to pull the, uh, the water, stick it in there. That's fine. And then we're going to move in the other direction, I guess, to bring the uh, the sulfur back, or the sulfuric acid back. So let me bookmark this calcium sulfate. So sulfuric acid is made with water and sulfur trioxide. So this chemical reactor here is going to be the one that makes the sulfuric acid and takes it out that, that way. To make the sulfur trioxide, we need sulfur and oxygen, right? So let's see, sulfur trioxide is sulfur dioxide and oxygen in a chemical reactor. And then the first one is molten sulfur and oxygen. So we need like two. So this one is making sulfur sulfuric acid. This one's making sulfur trioxide. This one's making sulfur dioxide. And they're all moving this way. Let's make some more fluid ducts. We do also need a, a melter, but we have a melter. The melter is over... Here, in my inventory, <laughs> I picked it up. So the melter is for the initial bit of sulfur. So to make the sulfur dioxide, we need oxygen gas and molten sulfur. So let's do this. You're going to melt me some sulfur, which I think we have. 
We've got 28. Not a crazy amount, but we have some. And then that's going to pull out this way. Like so. We're then going to combine that with oxygen. Right now, our oxygen is over in here. I'm going to temporarily just steal this little uh, tank. We'll put that back in a second, I promise. Because then we want to put some of that oxygen into both of these, right? Like, these both need oxygen, so we'll do, like, this. And then... This. Because you're going to turn molten... Is that working? Oh, yeah, there it is. Molten sulfur plus oxygen. So if I get this to uh, output, which is just a right-click with the crescent hammer, we should hopefully... C. Oxygen. This should hopefully start working once I provide it with power. There we go. And it should start doing its thing. Let's quickly go ahead and do some uh, speed and energy upgrade reconfiguring. Once all that's been pulled out, over here we can do the same thing again. Energy upgrade and speed upgrade. That's going to make us the sulfur, uh, sulfur dioxide, which we're then going to extract over here. That's going to make sulfur trioxide. That sulfur trioxide is then going to go out again and be combined up with water? Water. So now, once again, we move this over. And that should make sulfuric acid. And then that sulfuric acid is going to be pulled out over into here, combined up with the fluoride water. And finally, Chet, we should make some freaking calcium sulfate solution. And at that point, we then need to get a crystallizer. I don't make the rules chat, all right? I just play by them. Let's request some more tough alloy real quick. There we go. Crystallizer acquired. And so chat, finally, all we have to do is take... What I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to move this out of the way because we don't do any more. I'm going to take this, like, servo off here. We're going to put the crystallizer down there. And then we're going to extract from the chemical reactor, which is currently going quite slowly, but that's fine. We can swap these over. There we go. So we're getting hydrofluoric acid and calcium sulfate. So you, I want to just be... Uh, actually, let's just make sure you don't go anywhere. I want to extract just the calcium sulfate solution out of the left-hand slot here. So ignored. And then in the crystallizer, we should be able to take... Let's uh, set that to void excess. Like that. So it's not going to clog up the system. And then over here. Boom and boom. Chat, we've done it. <laughs> That is a nightmare craft. It's actually not too bad, honestly. Like, it's a it's a bit of a pain. And we've, like, in, obviously in no way automated that. Mostly because we don't have the, um, the sulfur to automate that. But we do have, chat, 11 of this calcium sulfate. And so we should, finally, be able to, uh, to craft up, uh, like, 16 of this crystal binder. Perfect. And then from there, chat, I think we have everything it takes to make the elite plating. So, let's go ahead. We only need four. Let's make four one uh, of you. Two, three, four. Beautiful. And then from there, let's see if we can't go up to the DU plating, uh, which requires sulfur, of course, which we now don't have. Um, how, are we, how have we been getting sulfur, chat? Let me check this real quick. So we can crush blaze rods. We've also been sifting for it. Wait, we have sulfur, right? It's just not connected. Yeah, it's got to be in... Oh, it's in here, right? With our bone meal. Yeah, there it is. I was going to say, I knew we had sulfur coming in somewhere. So let's craft up four DU plating. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. And then from there, chat, finally, we should be able to craft up four elite plating. One, two, one, two, three, four. Beautiful. All right. And at that point, I think we've got basically everything. Um, but we do need to get ourselves uh, some of those manga magnesium dibride solenoids, for those who are easy enough. We also need... Um, another one of the machine chassis, and we also need two chemical reactors. But chat, I'm going to go ahead and nab this guy and this guy and use those instead because we currently do not need them. And boom, we have a fusion core. Finally, chat, finally. While we were doing that, our system has finished crafting up the 64 electromagnets. And so now, chat, we have completed this quest here. We can claim our remaining electromagnets, taking us up to the 96 required there. And I believe we have now everything it takes 
to set this up. So I'm going to grab one of our 9x9s here. And actually, you know what? No, let's go ahead. I'm going to do this in our 13 by 13. We're not going to use all the space, but I think having the extra space is going to make my life a little easier. So, and it also gives us the opportunity to expand in the future if we want to. So for now, I'll just slap it down like this and we'll head on in. So essentially, chat, what we're going to do is we're going to build. Let me find the, the center point. I think it's there. Yeah, we're going to put down our fusion core like that. Now, the smallest reactor that you can build, to the best of my knowledge, with this is in a 9x9 space. And so what you do is you take the electromagnets and you're kind of building a ring around this. And what I mean by that is you're building something that looks like this, but like all the way around, right? Not including that middle bit there. And then like when you get to a corner, for example, it turns like this, right? So we're kind of building something like this all the way around the reactor. Hopefully that visual represent <laughs> representation there was somewhat useful. But essentially, for our purposes, it means doing something like this. That's kind of that's kind of like the middle inner bit of the ring. And then we're also going to do something like this. There we go. Let me get rid of some of this uh, andesite here. And also get rid of that misplaced electromagnet. And then also, this is kind of like, this is going to be the inside bit, right? So we're going to have electromagnets here and here. And then this is going to run all the way around the outside, forming our ring for the fusion core. And that's basically all of like the physical setup. Now, you do have to power every single one of these fusion, uh, of these fusion electromagnets with 200 redstone flux per tick. So we are going to have to run some power into here. And I might just go ahead and move this uh, compact machine over to nearer the reactor so we can just kind of power it like that. That seems like it might be the easiest way to do it. But there we go, and that requires exactly 96 electromagnets. So this should be now good to go. Let's pop out into the overworld and let's move this guy. Uh, I don't think we lose our stuff in it when we break it. I'm like fairly certain that's not how that works. Uh, but let's go and move him over um, really to anywhere that has infinite power. So I guess we could kind of just put it right here as long as we have a tunnel coming in on the, uh, on the side there. And uh, we do have a tunnel available. So we'll take this now. I'm just thinking about how I want to do this. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll have a tunnel like that. We are, we actually, we don't need cryo-stabilized flux ducts for this. Like, honestly, I think we need 19,000 redstone flux. So maybe it's worth upgrading to um, these signalum ones. But we only need the 19,000 total, right? We don't need 19,000 uh, like through one pipe. But essentially what I'm thinking here, chat, is if we just do something like this on the inside, that's gonna power uh, these electromagnets and these electromagnets. And then we'll also do one on the top side. You'll see in a second, I guess, um, how that works. Um, we could look at autocrafting the flux ducts. The flux ducts are a little hard to autocraft given that they they require like um, an infusion of redstone. People have told me I don't need to infuse the redstone until the last point. Like I can do this and uh, upgrade. Oh, we have Signalum, is that our problem? Oh no, we have Signalum. Is it not, uh, hold on chat, hold on. Oh, you know, here we go, this, this one down here, I see. Yeah, there's 42 more. Now I can infuse these with uh, with redstone. So once again, that's our, oh, it is the fluid infuser. Fluid infuser and the melter. Takes a while, <laughs> but I think, uh, can I fluid infuse these? No, do I have to fluid transpose these? I see, okay. That's fine, chat. That is very fine. Um, I do want to empty out that jelly cry theme as much as it pains me to uh, to waste it. There we go. <laughs> All right, so those are coming in nice and fast. I don't think you have to go right to the end. I think the power does transfer a little bit. So I think it's quite possible if I do this. They should start turning green, by the way, once they have um, redstone flux. This is currently not connected to the right side. That's fine. There we go. We should now see that turning green. There we go. Beautiful. And yeah, you'll see these ones here 
even without all of these cables are still turning green because the power does transfer um, a little bit. So that seems to be fine. We then do, of course, need to have power to the top half of the uh, electromagnets, and we're probably not going to quite have enough flux ducts here, but that's fine. So something like this should also power this top half, and you basically just want to make sure that all of the uh, electromagnets are green. If all of your electromagnets are green, you are good to go. We might actually be fine now, now that I look at it. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be A-OK -okay here. Beautiful. Okay, so all of our electromagnets are green, which is what we want. And so now we'll see that slowly but surely, the temperature of our fusion core is on its way up. And we need to get this up to 8,000. So it's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> this does go faster the more power you have. Right now we are limited to uh, 36,000 RF per tick. Uh, or actually, I guess we're limited by our uh, flux looks a little bit more maybe. But uh, we just have to wait essentially for this to get up to, uh, to 8,000, which might take a little bit of time. Uh, but while we wait for it, we have to decide what uh, fuel we're going to put in the, uh, the reactor. Now, the whole point of our reactor is that we are trying to get glowstone, right? We want to be able to make glowstone. To get the glowstone, uh, we need energized glowstone because we use energized glowstone with cryothium dust to make glowstone dust. To make energized glowstone, we need redstone destabilized and neutron fluid. The neutron fluid is made in the fusion reactor. So these like 15 recipes here are the possible options for us to actually get this going. Now, I looked at this. So there are a few options here. You have things like hydrogen and uh, tritium, uh, deuterium and deuterium. Deuterium we are making from our electrolyzer, so that is easy enough to make, but you do require a lot of it. So something to bear in mind is you'll see it says base combo lifetime. That's how long it takes to burn through these here, I believe. So right now, this, if we used deuterium, it would require 2,000 millibuckets every 200 ticks, which is every 10 seconds. So, and deuterium is not made fast. It's made uh, 50 millibuckets at a time from one bucket of water in the electrolyzer, which is already slow at 240 seconds. So even if you sped these up to max speed, I think you'd need like maybe four or more electrolyzers fully sped up to continually power this with uh, deuterium. The benefit of going with something like deuterium is that it, the optimal temperature is much lower. Uh, it's 1,156 MK. And then the base power output is 50,700. I think I'm probably going to go with molten lithium, six and seven. Or maybe even molten lithium 7 and 7. Although I feel like 6 and 7 makes more sense. Let me uh, type in neutronium here and bookmark that so I can get to it faster. But um, so for these two, they have long lives, you know, 700 ticks, and their base power is lower, 22,900. But we're really not after a high amount of power. All we're really after is the neutron fluid. And if you go with molten lithium 7 7, this produces 10 or 20 millibuckets of neutron fluid every 700 ticks. Right, and uh, 700 ticks, if you do 700 divided by 20, is 35 seconds. So every 35 seconds, it's going to produce 20 neutron fluid. Whereas, for example, the other recipe with the deuterium only produces 5 millibuckets every 200 ticks. So 5 millibuckets every 10 seconds, which is worse, right? Uh, plus, the lithium is a lot easier to get. So while the lithium is not going to produce as much power at the start, uh, because its operating temperature is also sub substantially higher, the optimal temperature, sorry, is 16,611 MK. So it's going to take a really long time for the reactor to get up to the point um, where it actually produces the 22,000 RF per tick. But whilst it's getting up to that temperature, it is still going to produce uh, the neutron fluid for us. So, and we also have lithium in abundance, so we don't actually have to do any further setup to make this work. I think it's all, uh, all just good to go. We need to do a few things, chat. We need to get ourselves a melter. Uh, we also need to get ourselves a, another not in good farmer. We need to get ourselves, chat, one of the um, we need an isotope separator so we can separate our lithium down into lithium-7 and lithium-6. And then we're going to just kind of store and void the lithium-6 for now. Uh, but then the lithium-7 is going to be used in the melter to make molten lithium. And that molten lithium is going to be pumped into our fusion reactor. Uh, hopefully this gets to 8,000 fairly quick, uh, at which point we can then start to produce the uh, the neutron fluid. So, let's see. Do we have what it takes to make an isotope separator? I think we should. Seems a lot easier than the recipes we were just looking at, so should not be too bad. Beautiful. Uh, we are going to need another tunnel coming into here for um, refined storage shenanigans. And I guess we'll do it on the front. Like that, which is the east... Uh, I think I'll make like a staircase here, chat. 
And this, by the way, is why I want to make a larger room. You can do this in a much smaller room. Like this reactor fits in a nine by nine room, but it fits in a nine by nine room, like right up against the wall. Um, you can do that. You can use like elevators to get up and down and whatnot. But I think having this extra space is going to make life a little um, easier for us. So let's do, I guess, just like this. Make sure that's set to east, like so. And then we're going to have our isotope separator. Let's say uh, like right about here like that and so we're going to export lithium to that isotope separator so do we have an exporter we do not but we should be able to make one i'm going to request like a bunch of these improved processes because we use them all the time and i never have them we're, like ready to go we're, like our system knows how to make them and it's not like they're particularly expensive either there we go so uh, you are going to export lithium to here Beautiful. Uh, we will put some of the uh, speed, well, we'll craft some more speed and some more energy upgrades. I'm not quite sure we need a stack of both, but uh, at this point, I feel like we might as well start there and then we can move on after that. Uh, from there, we, of course, need our melter. And uh, I think I'm going to have to make another one, but that is also fine. Again, not a particularly difficult recipe for us to make. And we should have uh, what it takes, hopefully, to make four more of that advanced plating. We do indeed. Um, nether brick, <laughs> of course, is always our downfall. It's something I've yet to automate, and so I do need to go and manually make a bit more um, a bit more nether brick. Do we have our stone barrel? We do indeed. And do we have a bucket? We do indeed. So it should, chat, simply be a case of uh, grabbing the lava and then using the redstone, right? There we go. And then give that a quick smell. Beautiful. Okay, so that should be our melter taken care of. It is indeed fantastic. And then back down here, we're going to extract from the isotope separator. And again, we want to make sure we go in the right direction here. So we want to make sure that the number seven is going forward. And then number six, for now, I'm just going to set to void excess and not go anywhere. We could store that if we need it for later, but for now, I'm not really sure we do. And then essentially, if we grab an item conduit, and a servo. We should be able to extract from here over into the melter. That's going to start melting down that uh, lithium into um, molten lithium-7, which we're then going to pump basically directly into our fusion core. And I think at that point, chat, we just have to wait essentially for, for this to heat up. We are going to have to set up some kind of uh, some tanks, maybe, because uh, we do get a few byproducts here. Uh, we're going to get helium gas and neutron fluid and i think it's also possible that we might have to get some another uh, another nullifier because you'll see that we get 10 or 20 millibuckets of neutron fluid for every 3,000 millibuckets of helium gas so uh, we're going to fill up a tank of helium gas quite quickly uh, and i'm also not quite sure if we need the helium gas just yet uh, let's get some more speed and energy upgrades as well going for this guy another 64 thank you and then energy wise let's get another 64 of you beautiful those 11 are of course for this guy here and yeah, I'm pretty sure at that point we're good to go. Now, one thing to bear in mind, chat, is that uh, the reactor... So basically what happens is once the reactor has enough power, which it, it's currently getting, it's slowly but surely climbing up uh, to 8,000. Once it gets to 8,000, it's going to start heating up even further. And then the efficiency is going to climb. So for us, using the lithium method with uh, this one here, the two molten lithium and the helium gas and the neutron fluid, this will operate at its maximum efficiency, and by that it means it's going to produce 22,900 redstone flux per tick, once it reaches a temperature of 16,611. Now, if the reactor, on the way up, it's going to produce less than that, right? So once we get to like 1% efficiency, it's going to produce like uh, 2,000 RF per tick, and then, you know, so on and so forth, all the way up to 22,900. But we want to make sure that the reactor doesn't blow up. We want, if, if it gets too hot, it's going to explode. And I think that, that too hot is not too far above 16,611. Now, I'm fairly certain that what we can do, chat, is we can prevent the reactor from blowing up by using active coolers, which are these guys right here, active fluid coolers. They're not too difficult to make. They're made with, uh, is that silver or tin? Let me check that real quick. They're made with tin, copper, and basic plating. And essentially what you do is you put these down, for example, anywhere like either here or here. Anywhere that I've put these uh, signal and flux ducts is fine. 
Uh, so, for example, if we put ours down, uh, let's say right about here, and these do require a coolant, I'm going to use water, because water for us is nice and easy to come by. And we can, of course, make another one of these uh, unlimited water sources fairly easily. And uh, for now, actually, I'm just going to go and steal this one, but we might need a, a, like an extra one in a second. And then all we have to do, chat, is put the water like right there, and that should begin distributing water to these. So this one distributes water to the one below it, but then they also distribute water amongst themselves. Which is very nice indeed. Now, right now, that's not going to be enough, and I can't really show you how these work until we get up to 8,000, but we're going to need a few of these, and these are going to help cool our reactor down and stop it from overheating. All right, chat. This is it. We've done it. Oh, it's done. All right. It took about 45 minutes, but the reactor is online. We have the temperature. Look at look at it skyrocketing now because it hit that initial that initial boom. Oh, my goodness. All right. All right. All right. Jeez. OK, so the idea here, chat is that every 35 ticks, uh, every 35 seconds, sorry, every 700 ticks, it's going to use a little bit of molten lithium, about a bucket, I think, of each, and it's going to produce the uh, the neutron fluid and the helium gas over here. Look at that. We have 20 millibuckets of uh, neutron fluid and some helium gas here. So uh, if we do something like this, and we set this to extract, like so, um, they have both filled up with helium, which is not what we wanted, but what we can do now is we can grab a bucket. We can grab some helium. We can then, in here, we're going to blacklist helium. So going forward, once I've emptied out both of these tanks here, um, we shouldn't have a problem with helium. Let me just use our uh, nullifier to quickly do some helium dumping. Like that. And then from that point on, we should be able to do this. Let's not do that. And there we go. That's our... Neutron fluid. So the helium is going to back up and it's going to void when it gets full. The neutron fluid is going to be pumped out over to here. It's beautiful. Now, what we do want to do, chat, is we do want to make sure that we have coolers down because I'm going to leave this reactor running and my base is chunk loaded. If we did this, you'll see right now we're efficiency zero. And that's because our temperature is currently 110,000 kK. And we need to get it up to. 14,000, oh sorry, that's not the right one, is it? It's this one here, to 16,000 MK, right? Which is 16,000 like million Kelvin. So it's a ton of power, we're nowhere near it. You know, right now we're 0% efficiency. When it gets to that 16,000 MK, it'll be 100% efficiency and it'll be producing 20,000 hours per tick. We're quite a ways away from that. It might not even be there by the time we stream this again. But for now, all we have to do to stop it from exploding is put down enough active there's no wireless transmitter in range. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm out of uh, juice, maybe. Um, all we have to do is make sure that we have enough active coolers down to get to to get the active cooling rate to 5,000 k per tick. Once you're at 5,000 k per tick, the reactor will never go above 100% efficiency and will thus ne therefore never blow up. So once we hit 5,000 Kelvin, uh, you'll see that it'll say 100%. And I'll show you in just a second here. Don't want to connect that up to the fluid there because molten boron is not a good cooler. But uh, right now, the water should be being placed into all of these. It is. And you'll see right now our cooling is at 2,700 uh, Kelvin per tick. We want that at 5,000. You'll see right now we're just over 50%. Uh, it's at 56% on the cooling there. So uh, all we have to do is put a few more of these down. They do require water. And I think we'll do it maybe just like here. People did rightly point out in the, uh, the Twitch chat that um, these work best when you put them at opposites, opposite sides of the reactor. But uh, given our current situation with all the flux ducts. I think for now, just putting them down, putting enough of them down, we can brute force the uh, the system. We do need some buckets. Uh, actually, we can make this with our reservoirs, right? Diagonally opposite. That's the one, chat. Yes, of course. What are we at now? We're at 3,400. 4,200. Let's request like 20 more active coolers. Now, you don't want to go over. We want to hit pretty much, we want to try and hit like bang on 5,000. Because if we go over, then it's not the end of the world if we go over. We just produce slightly less redstone flux per tick if we go over. 
because basically when we go if we go over we're limiting the reactor to like 99 percent efficiency or 98 percent efficiency uh, which is a little under but there we go 5080k per tick means that it's 101 percent cooled and so uh, it does uh, trickle down to 99 but it seems to be holding i should i should get out of the water sauce <laughs> i think our water source is kind of not quite at the minute able to to keep up so like one more here should do the trick, I think, and should keep it over 5,000. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. That's way over 5,000 now. It is indeed, actually. Yeah, let's bring it down a bit. There we go. 5,200. I think that's fine. And again, it's it's we're talking about the difference between like maybe 22,000 and 22,800 RF per tick, right, at, at max. Um, but right now, this is not producing any power. This will start producing power once it gets up to, like, at least 1% efficiency, which will happen when we hit 1% of 16,000 million Kelvin, which might take a while. Uh, but the good news, though, chat, is that we are producing neutron fluid. The bad news is that seemingly that neutron fluid is not being deposited or not being extracted. Which is a little awkward. It looks like the helium being on the top wants to come out first. So, like, despite the blacklist here, I can't, uh, I can't pull the, the neutron fluid out. All right. So now our helium is whitelisted on the server going into the nullifier. The neutron fluid is being placed into the portable tank. And we have enough cooling uh, to keep our reactor from exploding. And so, chat, in the next stream, when we come back, we will begin the process of turning our neutron fluid into glowstone energized glowstone and then into actual glowstone and uh, finally we'll start looking and seeing if we can't produce this high impact compactor getting our first diamonds making a diamond pickaxe getting some chunks of bedrock making a bedrock pickaxe and escaping out of this compact claustrophobia world that we find ourselves in but for now guys as always if you did enjoy the stream and you want to see more in the future you can go ahead and hit follow to get notified when i go live i'll be back on i'll be back tomorrow with some more q tech i'll be back on uh, wednesday with some more combat claustrophobia if you want to check out more and uh, see what happens and, and see if the reactor Close up.